again to Firebrand Ministry. I'm going to take it away and let our good friend Wendy Mixel from Decatur, Illinois, uh, and Dave, Pastor Dave, share some from the Word of God. I hope you're encouraged. Thank you so much for your viewing, and we pray that the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ will reach out from this camera and help you in your walk with the Lord, to help you have a deeper personal relationship with Jesus Christ. To love our enemies when they're our own brothers and sisters in Christ is even more difficult. See, yeah. Christ forbade he, sectarianism, okay? Now, the disciples went out and they came back. John did, it actually, and said, Lord, we saw a man casting out demons today and we forbid him not to do it because he's not one of us. And Jesus says, oh, don't do that. For he who is for me cannot be against me. See, but there's a controlling spirit, and it's called the spirit of religion. You're very familiar oh, with yeah. it. The spirit of religion will kill you. Okay? And there's a there's a itchy ear. There's a critical spirit. Okay? And you can see a lot of these things in operation. But I want you to notice something. This is what's broke my heart over the last three months of my life. Some of the greatest men and women of God were attacked by the devil and died of cancer at the end and I have been warring against the disease and the infirmities and the attacks of the enemy now it doesn't come out without great cost it doesn't come out without prayer and fasting okay so Jesus is the name above every name and and I was talking to a spiritual advisor my spiritual friend and and compadre if you will today and and I said oh man I'm just he's been going through cancer treatments and and the Lord had touched him, and the situation completely turned around, and he decided to take the treatments anyway because they told him it would give him a 15% chance greater that it wouldn't come back. And it broke my heart because God said, don't do it. And he's been the sickest. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Whatever he goes through, I go through it when he has a treatment. You can ask my wife. Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, I fought a headache like you would not believe. It was all I could do to keep going and walk in my faith. And I talked to him today, and he says, he said, well, I had another treatment. I said, oh, I know you did. I struggled with a headache for two days. He said, oh, my yeah. goodness. He said, for the first time in this treatment, I got a headache. I said, yeah. but And, and he doesn't understand it because a lot of teachings went out a long time ago that says we can have sympathy but not empathy. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said we're all one in the body. We're all one That's in the spirit, right. so if one suffering... If you're really connected, you will feel others pay. And you know what, yes. Dave? That happens to be a lot more lately, I've noticed, because I like... And I always ask, Lord, is this something that from that is for someone else, or is it about me and what's going on? And I love it what you're saying about cancer, because I was saying this yesterday, and again today, when we were... Marilyn and I were just praying with a gal for a heart problem, uh -huh. and, and we... And I, I speak from my experience. I came out of severe, severe abuse. Um, my dad was an alcoholic, and he he tried to sexually abuse me when he was so, drunk, never when he was sober. Uh -huh. And he would come home stinking drunk, and, and only until he got deep in his alcoholism. But I was about 11, uh -huh. and it was, he never succeeded completely, but it didn't matter. It destroyed me. Right. And um, then, of course, a spirit attached to me. From that moment on, I felt the I felt the demonic. I couldn't tell you that's what it was back then, but I felt the darkness come on me, and I attracted every abuser that was within a mile from me, and married an abuser, and and had I've gone through beatings and all, and I always was a loving and caring person, but I had to learn to fight just to survive, and I hated it that I would have to hit somebody, you know, because I I just I don't like it, but I can do it. I can take you down. You know, I learned to because I had to. Yeah. But in that, that was a defense mechanism I had to learn and operate under for self-preservation. But there's also that when we have that um, that offense and that hurt and that, uh, you know, those things, issues of the past, we develop ways of surviving within our heart. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a wall. It's a hardened heart. It is. Uh, and we can forgive. We forgive, you know, our abusers, and we get out of it. And God delivers us out of that, you know, away from that demonic spirit. But the structures that have been built up in us, the body of Christ, keeps us from connecting with one another. Until I was totally healed, 
of that inner structure. And I did, we call it inner healing stream with our group. Mm -hmm. And what it is is a couple people will pray with you. You repeat some scriptures and then you pray a prayer asking God to show you what it is he would like to heal me of at this moment. Then the person that's getting the prayer, they do the praying. Now other people just pray in the spirit and, and, you know, when, when God gives that person, me, what he wants to do, he reveals it. We give people words of knowledge a lot of time, and God works that way. But this was the most powerful healing for me. He gave me a vision, and it was of a wall, and this wall had a spider in the corner of it, mm-hmm. and it had webs, and it was dark, and it was pressure. And But mm-hmm. I saw the wind and the glory of God coming in, and it burned up that spider and that webbing to where it just crumbled and then the wind of the spirit blew it away and it's like his love blew on it and it penetrated those bricks with grass green grass and turned into this beautiful garden and that wall came down and i say all that because until that inner thing within us dealt with that structure and i'm telling you we all have them some form or another some are willing to let god do it i had so much that i couldn't when I let that happen. God be able to, was able to move in my heart and through my heart, not just my spirit. Mm-hmm. And then the Father heart was released. Yeah. Makes sense. Great pressure. Great pressure yeah. in the earth in a pit of coal forms a diamond. <laughs> Glory to God. I think I'm still that piece of coal, to tell you the truth, but he's pressuring. No, you have been under great pressure, and you've come out sparkling like a diamond. That was the vision that I got as as you were sharing your testimony there. Wow. The the post that you saw on my wall this week, Dr. Ray Silverman, he's a doctor. Did you see that on my wall? Oh, here it is. David, I will never forget how... You knew what my wife was suffering from a weak heart, was suffering from a weak heart, even though I did not tell you about it. Somehow you knew it in your spirit, and when you prayed for her, she felt your prayers, even though she never met you. Your prayers healed her heart. That was in 91. Today, 20 years later, she is still healthy, and her heart continues to beat in perfect tune with the Lord's love. Thank you so much for your prayers. You are truly a man of God, Ray Silverman. I do remember reading that. 20 years. Oh, 20 years. When I gave him the word, he didn't say anything. A tear trickled down his cheek. He never gave me any confirmation. And I said, you don't have to say anything. I know the Holy (laughs) Ghost gave this to me. Okay. 20 years. Okay. I knew that I knew that I knew that I'd heard from God. God's looking for the boldness to come out more now today than ever before. It was bold to go back and confront the guy as he was running back to my car. Now when he looked in and he'd seen the size of the man that he was fixing to attack, that might have had something bearing to it, but I'd like to believe it was the anointing of the Holy Spirit that brought that guy to a point of humility. He couldn't even hardly speak to me last night. Then we got up to Walmart. We we witnessed to another guy that kind of looked like he wished he could crawl under the asphalt because we caught him at he was high. (laughs) He was, oh, yeah. He, yeah, he was high. And my children got to see different spirits. This one guy was drunk and the other guy was stoned. Okay, And there was a totally different spirit that my children were getting to witness. All right. Second yeah. oh, Corinthians, yeah. yeah. Corinthians chapter 10. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Mighty through who? The pulling down the strongholds. But casting who, down who, vain, imagining everything. Mighty through and who? All, to God. Through who? Through Wendy? Through no. God. Through David? No. The transference of the anointing comes from God. And my confidence is always in His Word. What He said He would do in this Word, He will do it. I've prayed for people before and not seen any result. And them call me oh, back yeah. a week later and say, Oh my goodness, guess what happened? Yeah, I know what happened. God did what He said He was going to do. See, the test right. is there. Look at Heidi That's Baker. the confidence we have in Him. Right. In his word, and and look at Heidi Baker. For one year after she got the prop, the the uh, prophecy that God was going to give her Mozambique. Look at what that lady went through. That lady was struck down with muscular cirrhosis. That lady was paralyzed. I mean, you just think about what this lady went through. The uh, church that gave her ninety percent or ninety five percent of her support decided that they were going to withdraw her support. The 
the government in Mozambique came and repossessed her building. I mean, you think about what this lady went through. She never let go of the prophecy. She never let go of the prophecy. What happened? Oh my, oh my goodness. She went through a lot of trials like Job went through. You know, I was reading over there and, and God led me over there to Job today. It was kind of cool because, you know, a lot of times we forget. This, but what I see in my spirit is the healing balm of Gilead. <laughs> that's blowing. It's like a lightning bolt that's striking down and it's going to drive a wedge between her and the enemy and it's going to push her out in the wilderness the same way that it did Jesus. And when she comes out, she'll be shining like pure gold. Glorious. Woo!